12,000 years ago, early Europeans lived a hard life in nomadic bands. It was a way of life that had lasted for 100,000 years. Sheltering deep in their caves, they painted images of wild animals they hunted for food. For hundreds of generations, they had followed the herds, depending on them for survival. Now, they are about to face a new challenge. They will confront a different people from a different world. It will change them and all human life forever. The challenge started here on the green hills of the Middle East. Unlike Europe, the climate of the Fertile Crescent produced abundant food all the way from Israel to Iraq. Here, the hunter-gatherers lived very well, and they had learned to hunt with dogs. Dogs have been sitting in the sun with people for at least 12,000 years. They're our oldest companions on the human journey. So close, we're not even sure whether we tamed them or they tamed us. Dogs were a part of life and death. Inside a hut at Ein Malacha, in Israel, archaeologists found a woman buried 11,000 years ago under the floor. Beside her head was a puppy. Whoever covered them took the trouble to place the woman's hand over the dog's body. The Ein Malaha burials and the dogs really signal a shift in that human relationship between what had been a wild species, maybe an adversary, uh, and now which is something that had become part of daily life and as a matter of fact even something um, that merits burial with the dead. Uh, and that's a big shift indeed. The dogs were even more attracted to humans once they built huts. Dog domestication comes with human sedentism, with people settling down and creating trash heaps and so on that, that are a lure and an attractant to the dogs. But it does set some sort of a precedence of bringing animals from the wild closer in to that human sphere of life. The relationship with dogs must have set people thinking why not control other animals? It would provide a ready supply of meat and cut down on the hunting. But it took a crisis to push them forwards. The Middle East was hit with over a thousand years of drought. It was caused by a short ice age called the Younger Dryas, which brought glaciers to Europe and famine to the Fertile Crescent. It was a climate catastrophe. Deep in the sand and suffering, the hunters changed their way of life. Some people escaped to the few oases with water and good soil. Here, they learnt to plant crops and became the world's first farmers. 
others searched desperately for game across their traditional hunting lands. But the drought made the animals scarce. To save themselves, they took possession of their prey. The fireplaces of these hunters reveal the bones of goats, which were kept in herds. They were the very first domesticated farm animals. Archaeologist Melinda Zeda is tracking the way goats changed as they were domesticated. Her evidence comes from a huge collection of bones gathered from across the entire Middle East. The changes are most obvious in the horns. You can see on this big guy here from the highlands of Iran, a wild bezoar goat. Um, he's got a very large horn. It's a sharply keeled. It's rounded um, in its sort of profile here. It's, and it goes back in, a, in a, what they call a scimitar shape. And this is very distinctive of the, of the wild goat. It's quite different from what we see in this fellow here, this domestic goat, where it's, the horn is now flattened on the inside, it's twisted, and it, obviously it's quite a bit smaller. Now the reason for that is that in the wild, this kind of a horn gives the males a competitive advantage in competing for females. In the domestic situation, the males aren't competing for females, but the herder is selecting who breeds with whom. So there's really no need for this large equipment. Today in the Middle East, people are still herding goats in the same way. The first herders selected smaller and less aggressive animals, removing the very trays the animals needed to survive in the wild. In return, the herders provided food and protection. They soon added other animals to their herds. This one small part of the world supplied almost all our domesticated species. Alongside goats and sheep were pigs. This pottery figure from Turkey is 8,000 years old. Cows were early beasts of burden. We tend to look at domestication of animals as a big lose-lose situation for the animals. But really, from a Darwinian perspective, it's a big win-win, because domestic animals, through their uh, collaboration with humans, are able to outcompete their wild progenitors. For the humans, uh, obviously, they're obtaining resources, either plant or animal. It may not be as nutritious or even as necessarily as bountiful a diet as they were getting from hunting and gathering, but there is an element of security and predictability that this kind of resource provides. For the herders, it was a brilliant idea. By keeping the animals alive and breeding them, they guaranteed the supply of meat. The long drought of the Ice Age ended around 11,500 years ago. The world came back to life. Now, something truly remarkable happened. Two distinct ways of surviving, the herders and the cereal farmers, came together. They each had half of the puzzle. The herders had the animals, while the farmers were growing grain to feed the stock. For the first time in history, a ready supply of meat was brought together with cereals. Now the farming way of life